Vampire Survivors offers you a choice in what weapon you use, or more specifically, it offers you six choices. In any given run, you're able to pick up six weapons and six accessories. You can use those accessories to evolve your weapon, but you won't necessarily always want to. At some points, you might have the choice between do I want this really nice evolved weapon, or do I want this really strong accessory which will synergize with some other strong weapons that I already have. So today, I've put together a weapon guide and tier list to talk about what is the best weapon in Vampire Survivors, then at the end of the video, I'll also talk a little bit about builds as a whole and what might synergize with what else. Before I get into it, a quick look at a rating system. It's going to go from D tier to S tier, with D tier being an awful weapon that you should avoid at all costs. C tier being a bad weapon that's generally only good in the early game. B tier being something that's not a bad pick or occupies a niche but isn't amazing. A tier is a good weapon for most builds and you should probably take it if you're offered it. And finally, S tier is a god weapon. Always add this to your build and try to build around it or force it if you're able. So to start off, the whip. The whip is the first weapon you get access to and it's quite good early on. It fires a projectile to the side which deals solid damage in a good area. Unfortunately, this damage does fall off later, and the knockback pattern is a little bit awkward unless you get to at least four projectiles. So I'm going to give the whip a C tier ranking. If you collect both the whip and the hollow heart, you'll get the bloody tear, which is a crit enabled weapon that also heals you. So it's got a lot going for it. The bloody tear also does a lot more damage than the whip. However, I feel like it's held back by the fact that you need the hollow heart. Extra life isn't all that useful most of the time, as you should do your best to avoid damage entirely. So I'm going to be giving the Bloody Tear an A tier ranking, because while it is a very solid weapon, it has utility and very good damage, especially if you're standing beneath enemies. It isn't perfect because the accessory required makes your entire build a little bit weaker. Now, as an overall ranking, I'm going to give both combined a B. Or if you're using the Slash Arcana, then an A minus. It offers very good utility, it offers a lot of damage early, and it can offer healing in the endgame, which means you can walk through enemies with very little effort but it comes with a somewhat awkward and useless utility item, and it overall doesn't offer the most damage. Next up, the Magic Wand. The Magic Wand fires a projectile towards a random enemy. It scales with projectiles, it scales with projectile speed, and it's really low damage. In fact, even in the gameplay when I was picking it up, I was struggling to clear things from the start. So I'm going to give this weapon a C-. If you combine the Magic Wand with the Empty Tome, you get the Holy Wand. The Holy Wand is exactly like the Magic Wand, except it now fires continuously. The damage is still pretty weak, but I will save it if at the very least. The Empty Tome is quite good and very effective for a lot of other weapons, so I'm going to give it a C plus here. In totality, I'm going to give the Magic Wand and Holy Wand a ranking of C. I'd avoid this one unless you're given no other choices, because while it does do okay damage early on, it falls off very, very quickly, and by late game is arguably useless. Though it does come with a very nice passive item, so maybe you can pick it up if you already have the item because you want it to boost something else. Next up, the knife, which is another weapon that's unfortunately held back by an awkward damage pattern. It hits reasonably hard, but it always aims in the direction you're going, so as you're running away from enemies and trying to kite them early, you're missing a lot. As a result, I'm going to give the knife a ranking of C tier. If you combine the knife and the bracer, an accessory that gives you projectile speed, you'll get the Thousand Edge which is like the knife and fires continuously. It does okay damage, and by the time you get late into the game, you're almost always going to be surrounded by enemies anyway, and in a target-rich environment, it starts to do pretty well. So, I'm going to give the Thousand Edge a B tier. This means that the combo overall will have a ranking of B tier, because it gets better as you get to the late game, and the early game, while awkward, can often be augmented by picking up a good second weapon. On the other hand, if you're using the Slash Arcana card, this becomes a ranking of A+. It greatly increases the damage output, and you can very effectively use the weapon to clear a path in front of you. At that point, you might even want to pick up a clover so that you get more crits and do more damage. Next up, we've got the axe, a very high damage skill that's great for early game as you throw an axe, it kind of arcs above you and then falls below you. In a lot of stages, having a weapon of this attack pattern is very efficient, as it means you can either go up or down to avoid enemies. So I'm going to give it a rank of A tier. You combine the axe with the Candelabrador, or Candelabra in English, to get the Death Spiral, which works a lot like the axe, except that it fires in a ring around you and has a very good knockback. The Death Spiral is an incredibly powerful weapon, and always a good pickup to have, so I'm going to give this an A tier. This means the weapon has an overall ranking of A. 
It's a good weapon early, it's a good weapon late, and it comes with a good item, since increasing area of effect synergizes very well with a lot of other powerful weapons. If you have a Slash Arcana, then it becomes an S-tier weapon that does absolutely incredible damage, and is easily one of the best weapons in the game. Next up, we've got the Cross, a weapon that I kinda wanted to like, but it never really works out. The Cross is a boomerang type weapon that scales really well early on. As you get multiple projectiles, it's pretty efficient at clearing the screen, so I'll give it a B rank. You combine the Cross with the Clover to get the Heaven Sword, and this is where things fall apart, because while the Cross is quite good, and the Clover is quite good as an item, the Heaven Sword's very awkward. It hits reasonably hard, and it can crit, but it only ever fires one projectile, and just kind of randomly bounces around the screen. So while it does pretty decent damage, it's rarely giving you damage where you need it. As a result, you can often get surrounded and killed if you're too reliant on this weapon. Therefore, the final ranking is A tier just because it does very good damage. And overall, I'd say this is a B plus. If you have Slash, it becomes a little bit better, and I'd give it a ranking of A minus, as at that point the single target does become really good. Most of the time, though, it's not worth giving up the extra projectiles from the cross, and by the time you get to late game, cross doesn't do enough damage anyway, so it's a fairly awkward choice. Then we have the King Bible, a weapon that requires duration and scales off of projectiles. It causes one or more Bibles to rotate around you, damaging all enemies. Unfortunately, early on, it has a very low uptime, which can make it extremely difficult to use, so you can pick it up as a secondary weapon, but because it's a late bloomer, I'm going to give it a rank of C tier. Now, remember how I said the King Bible was a late bloomer? Well, if you combine it with Spellbinder, an accessory that increases duration, it becomes the Unholy Vespers. Now it has infinite duration and circles around you damaging and knocking foes back. If you have projectile speed, this scales incredibly well, as does number of projectiles. Kind of creates a nice safe bubble into which enemies struggle to enter because they're very often knocked back. I'm going to give the Unholy Vespers a ranking of A tier. But the overall ranking is B tier because you either need other weapons that scale off of duration, or you lose all the value of your accessory when you evolve the weapon. And while Unholy Vespers is strong, and certainly scales very well, it's not really any stronger than something like Death Spiral, and pales in comparison to some of the best choices on the list. So while it's a fan favorite, and it does feel good to play, overall, it does feel a little bit mid-tier. Now some weapons you shouldn't trust your first impressions. When I picked up a Fire Wand at first, I thought, well, it has good single target, but overall, it's very awkward to use. However, in combination with the Heart of Fire Arcana, it becomes one of the strongest weapons in the early game for killing bosses. Therefore, I'm going to give it a ranking of B tier. You combine the Fire Wand with Spinach, one of the best utility items to pick up in the game, to get Hellfire. Instead of shooting little fireballs, you shoot large piercing meteors that deal absolutely massive damage. Hellfire will only kill everything in one direction, but most of the time it will kill everything which makes it a very safe weapon to use, it has solid knockback and very good damage scaling. So I'm going to give Hellfire a ranking of A tier. This means overall, the Fire One and Hellfire is about a B plus. Though if you have the Heart of Fire, it definitely becomes A plus tier. It can be a little awkward to use early as it doesn't boost your clear, but it's one of the best boss killers in the game and far easier to use than something like Axe. By the time you get to the late game, it scales well off projectiles and projectile speed, meaning it's a late game powerhouse as well, but it won't deal as much massive damage as some of the S tier weapons. Next up we have Garlic, which is where I'm a little nervous because I think people are going to roast me for this one. Garlic is a fan favorite, and I can see why. It feels incredibly good to have that little bubble where enemies just can't enter. It's also very good against ranged enemies as their projectiles are attackable and are easily destroyed by the Garlic. So it's very good for early game clear and very good for early game farming. As a result, I'm going to give it a B tier because it's a great weapon for beginners who are just learning the game. You combine Garlic with Pumarola to get Soul Eater. And this is why Garlic doesn't rank higher. Because Soul Eater essentially does the same thing Garlic does, but in a bigger circle and it heals you on kill. The problem with this is, well, Pumarola itself is not a great item. Getting health regen is nice if you take a hit once or twice, but if you take a hit once or twice, Floor Chicken should be more than enough to sustain you. And while the knockback from Garlic is very good early on, it falls off in the late game, where the bosses just don't seem to care. Finally, because the damage isn't too high, you're not going to be getting that many kills, so you won't be getting that much healing. Therefore, Soul Eater has a ranking of B tier. Overall, I'm giving this B tier because it feels really good to play, and it's really nice to not have to deal with enemy projectile mechanics. Damage-wise, it's probably more of a C tier weapon, but you don't need all six of your items to be powerhouses. 
As long as you have 5 solid weapons, you can easily fit garlic in and it'll feel great. Which speaking of, if you need a weapon to fit in that feels amazing and does amazing damage, maybe try Santa Water. This creates damaging puddles that hit very hard and last based on duration. Santa Water is one of the best items even before you evolve it, so I'm going to give it an A tier ranking. Be sure to scale projectiles, AoE, and duration if you pick this weapon up. The other nice thing about Santa Water is it's evolved via the Attract Orb. Attract Orb is nice because it lets you pick up loot from greater distance, so you get far more crystals faster as you're leveling up and as you're kiting enemies. Santa Water evolves into Labora, which causes the puddles to grow and move towards you. This is absolutely amazing and one of the best things in the game. Labora does absolutely massive damage, it can murder bosses, and it gives you a personal safe space bubble since the puddles are always converging on your location. It is incredibly effective at keeping enemies away from you, and I couldn't be happier. Easy S tier. Overall, there's nothing bad here. Santa Water is solid even from the start. It scales really well with a lot of choices for other good items. The utility item you pick up to evolve it is very good, and the evolve version is one of the best weapons in the game. So as a whole, this is an easy S tier. And speaking of easy S tiers, there's also the Rune Tracer. Rune Tracer fires a piercing line that bounces around dealing massive damage. Even before being evolved, Rune Tracer is one of the highest damage weapons in the game. It also has great utility, and if you ever get surrounded, it will clear a path due to the nature of piercing lines. Scale it with projectiles for more damage. This is one of the only base weapons that truly feels like it earned the S tier ranking. If you pick up some armor, you can evolve a Rune Tracer into No Future. No Future causes the Rune Tracer to work exactly the same as before, but now it's also constantly exploding, clearing even larger swaths of enemies. The damage this deals is pretty absurd. It scales with projectiles, duration, projectile speed, and so much more. Rune Tracer and No Future is so strong that you don't have to worry about the fact that armor isn't giving you damage. You don't need damage anymore because everything is just going to die. So I'm giving it a ranking of S+. Overall, unless you're going for something specific in your run, you should always try to take an Evolve Rune Tracer. It does absolutely massive damage and it will hard carry you in the endgame. About the only downside is it's not omnidirectional, but that aside, it'll still be very clear which direction it's going so you can go that way and avoid the most dangerous enemies. It's got absurd base damage and the coverage scales really well with duration and projectile speed, so I'm going to give this an overall rank of S+, despite the evolution item being fairly useless. Next up we've got the Lightning Ring, which is unfortunately good at clearing but lackluster overall. It's good at clearing because it deals with things that are far away from you very effectively. The problem with that is, as things get closer they're infinitely more dangerous, so if it doesn't blast stuff that's far away from you and it does reach you, you're going to be in trouble. Therefore I'm giving it an overall rank of C+. However, the Lightning Ring has one really cool thing going for it. It's evolved with the Duplicator Ring. The Duplicator adds projectiles, which makes it one of the best items to pick up regardless of your build. If you do, you get the Thunder Loop. I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase, lightning never strikes twice, but with a Thunder Loop, it absolutely will. You'll decimate large sections of a screen, again, mostly away from you, so you'll need something else to handle close range, such as, let's just say, some Unholy Vespers. Because it's easy to evolve, and because it does have a very effective damage output, one that's just a little below the powerhouses like No Future and Labora, I'm going to give Thunderloop a ranking of A tier. So overall, this is a very solid weapon that clears well early and can do damage late game. It's got an incredibly strong item pairing, but it comes with the awkwardness that it can't really deal with enemies that are right on top of you, the things that are by far the most dangerous. So Lightning Ring and Thunderloop earns an overall ranking of A-. And now we have everyone's least favorite weapon, or at least one of them, the Pentagram. It deletes every enemy on screen, but also, at low ranks, deletes their loot. If you pick this up too early, it will be straight up detrimental to your run, so I'm giving it a rank of D tier. You combine Pentagram and Crown to evolve it into the Gorgeous Moon. Crown itself is a very nice item that increases the EXP that you get. Gorgeous Moon deletes enemies, but doesn't delete their loot. It also increases the EXP gain that you get. The weapon will cycle through phases of a moon, turning off, then turning on, then deleting everything, and then collecting all the loot dropped by the deleted enemies. While it is an S tier weapon, and certainly earns it, remember you do have to pick up a pentagram and struggle through that. So overall, I'm going to rank the combo B-. It's good if you want to get EXP for late game, but it can ruin your run if picked up too early. And I've never really found that the screen wipes came at a time that were really useful, or saved me. 
It felt more like a win more gimmick. Yes, my number goes really high when I look at levels, it can be helpful for doing certain achievements, but overall it doesn't feel very good, so it earns a ranking of B-. Now if this next weapon, I might be a little biased since it's by far my favorite weapon. That is, the Song of Mana. Song of Mana fires two lines of energy, one above and one below. It's a great weapon since, even to start with, it hits fairly hard, it has very good range for clearing, and as you get AoE it'll extend a little bit to the left and right so you can just run into enemies and mow them down. Overall ranking, A tier. You combine Song of Mana with the Skella Maniac to get Manager. Manaja is an incredibly powerful weapon. With high amounts of duration, it's up almost all the time, and it hits a majority of the screen. It is incredibly satisfying to use, you have all of the benefits of running into enemies, which you saw with Garlic, with none of the downsides of dealing low damage. It's also got solid knockback, and overall feels really good, therefore earning a rank of S tier. There is one thing though that holds the overall score back, which is the evolution item. As powerful as Manager is, it needs to be. The evolution item actively curses you. This makes all enemies stronger while you're holding the skull. So keep in mind that to use and evolve this amazing weapon, you will be playing self-made hard mode, but it certainly gives the stats to warrant that level of detriment when it comes to the evolution item. Overall, I'm going to give it a ranking of S-. minus. Now there's two more weapons that can evolve, except they evolve in a really interesting way. These don't just require you to have a specific accessory item. They require you to have a specific pairing weapon. The first of which is the guns. Eight Vesparo and Fiera de Tefello. I apologize for my pronunciations, they're probably all terrible. These guns start off as one of the better projectile weapons in the game, since they fire fairly frequently and they have a good spread pattern. You can kind of think of this as exactly what a knife or magic wand does, but a lot better, earning the rank of B tier. If combined with a Tiragisu, a revive item, you get Fieragi. You'll also get one open slot to pick up a new weapon. This is an omnidirectional laser with good damage and a lot of scaling. Overall, I'm going to give Fioragi the ranking of A+. It does certainly hit quite hard, but certain other weapons do outshine it, and it isn't the best for knocking things away, as it's just kind of a passive damage aura. So overall, I'm going to give this an A-, not because it's bad, but because it's very tricky to evolve. You need to find both weapons, at least unless you happen to start with them, plus the Tiragisu. Tiragisu is very powerful, you should absolutely pick it up since it gives you a revive, However, because it gives you a revive, it's pretty rare and it's not uncommon to go through an entire run without being offered it. And so, if you get offered it late in the run, you probably don't have room for the guns, and vice versa. Then we have the birds, Pichone and Ebony Wings. These kind of fly around you and deal damage, but again, aren't the most effective. You'll also need both for the evolution, so keep in mind you're dedicating not one, but two weapon slots to something mediocre in the hopes that they get better later. And as a result, I'm going to give them both a ranking of C tier. But if you suffer through collecting your birds and level them up to level 8, then you get the Vandalier. The Vandalier is an amazing weapon, in fact, it's by far the best weapon in the game. It has huge damage, great area, and absurd scaling. It scales off of duration, projectiles, and pretty much everything else you can think of. With a strong firing pattern, you can use it to absolutely obliterate a boss, or clear a path, or just for passive damage because you want it to go AFK. Vandalier is an S++ weapon, the strongest weapon in the game, if you are wondering based on the title, and absolutely something that's worth targeting. Remember, when you combine the two, you will get an empty weapon slot back, so factor that in as well. Overall, I'm going to give this combo a ranking of S+. The two birds you start with aren't very good, in fact they're very mediocre, but you can pick them up in the mid-game when that won't impact you as much, and don't let the unimpressive starter weapons stop you from trying out Vandalier. It outclasses all other weapons in the game by so much that it's not even funny, both in terms of raw damage and also in how effective a firing pattern is. If you're ever wondering just how much damage can I do, well, the answer is yes. And then finally, a series of weapons which don't evolve, starting with the Clock Lancet. Clock Lancet freezes enemies but won't actively damage them. This can seem very effective early on, you'll quickly realize that enemies being not dead is very bad. If you have enough damage to kill them, you probably didn't need to freeze them to begin with because dead enemies aren't a threat. So I'm going to give the Clock Lancet a ranking of C+. Another weapon that seems good in theory but in practice is pretty mediocre is the Laurel. It's immunity but it has a cooldown. 
and it shares exactly the same problem with Clock Lancet, but even worse since now the enemies are still trying to hit you, so you have to actively dodge them. Therefore, I'm giving Laurel a ranking of D plus tier. Then we have character specific weapons, starting with the Gati Amari, or really annoying cats, which if you're wondering is by far the worst weapon in the game. It has low damage, it can't be scaled very well, and it can even damage you. Getting an item slot for a utility item that's really strong definitely doesn't make up for it, so this gets the ranking of D minus. The Bone is a boomerang type weapon that works a lot like the Cross, except it scales really well with duration. It can be very awkward early on, but bounces really well once you get to larger packs of enemies. The damage here is a little bit surprising. On the other hand, it's held back by the fact that you don't really get an evolution. So it earns a rank of B for Bone. The Cherry Bomb, on the other hand, is a little bit better. It also starts out lackluster, it also bounces around, but it can explode, meaning you'll probably want to pick up the Clover to increase the explosion chance. And once you start scaling it, those explosions end up doing a lot of damage. Unfortunately, there is no evolution, but as a starting weapon, it does scale pretty well, and it means you can always pick up something like Spinach, which is a very good generic item. So it gets the rank of B+. And finally, the Carello, another weapon that's absolutely awful. It scales poorly, it has no evolution, and it's really hard to hit enemies in the first place. Only play this if you want to do self-made hard mode, and if you're going to do that, pair it with Gati Amari. It earns a ranking of D tier. Now I'm going to take a little time to talk about how some of the weapons combine and synergize with each other. But before I do, a quick reminder that if you've enjoyed this tier list, be sure to leave a like on the video as that really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more Vampire Survivors content or more content in general, sub to the channel and ring that bell to be notified when I upload. This video was a lot of work, so hopefully people enjoy it. It took a lot of time and this channel isn't monetized yet, so if you want to support me financially, you can do so over on my Patreon with a link that'll be down in the description. For now though, let's start talking about how you might combine god weapons to make a god build. Early on, I mentioned that Rune Tracer and its upgrade No Future was absolutely amazing. It provides high damage throughput and can help prevent you from being surrounded. It scales off projectile speed and duration. So you might want to pair it with something like Labora, which also scales very well off projectiles, projectile speed, and duration. This means you're probably picking up a duplicator, so you might as well pick up a lightning ring as well and evolve it into a thunder loop. All of a sudden, you have two weapons that kill everything that's far away from you, and one that gives you a potential safe space. If you want to boost your close range damage, at this point you'd want to pick up something like a Song of Mana, as that'll add a lot of safety from enemies above and below you. Alternatively, because a lot of your weapons are already doing AoE damage, maybe you want to pick up something like an Axe and evolve it into a Death Spiral. This way, a lot of your supporting utility items are also evolution items for your other weapons, meaning they work together really well. Another example of this is, let's say you got Vandalier. Well, Vandalier is great with anything that scales projectiles. On the other hand, maybe you started with Song of Mana. Well, Song of Mana does want AoE, so again, picking up an Axe and a Death Spiral could work really well. Labora scales very well off of AoE and Duration. Now you've got a really good shoe in You probably already have enough damage, but you don't need to force no future. So instead, maybe you'll grab a Gorgeous Moon. At this point, your damage should be good regardless, so you might as well delete enemies, get a bunch of loot, and pump your level up a lot faster. Alternatively, you could want to do a crit build. You'll start on something like Knife or Whip, you'll grab Axe, you'll grab Heaven Sword, and you'll go from there. If you want to focus on making safe spaces for yourself, you might again want to start Song of Mana, grab Unholy Vespers, remember the duration will scale really well once you get the Mana Jaw, grab a Death Spiral, and toss some Garlic on top. This will make it so that enemies really can't approach you, no matter how hard they try. So these are just a few examples of builds that you can make by combining various weapons. In general, I'd aim for two or three really high damage weapons, two or three good utility weapons, and then fill the last two with pretty much whatever you want. If you're me, you do it based on what good accessories you get. So I've included Thunderloop in a lot of builds, just because Duplicator is very good. And sometimes I'll even do something crazy, like take a Song of Mana, but then not evolve it because I don't want to pick up a Skull of Manic. Instead, I'll grab Spinach, since Spinach goes well with absolutely everything. And so now, I only have one question that's left. What's the best build in Vampire Survivors? Which six weapons and which six accessories combine to be the most powerful? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments below, or join the Discord where you can ask questions, get build help, and hang out with the community. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. They're awesome, and they get to show it by having their name on screen in the credits of all my videos. So if you want to see your name here, be sure to check the link in the description. 
You can also help support me by purchasing Steam games through my Nexus. And if you want a water bottle or a cool shirt, I have a link to my official merch shop in the description. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.